Hi all, welcome to another learning support video. Today we're going to be taking a break from looking at questions that you might find in your past papers and look at something more complicated guys and look at something that you guys probably won't find in your past, I mean in any of your papers, but it's very beneficial for you guys to see where the math is going and how we can actually use algebra and things that we learn in our math class to actually apply to some weird and wacky equations that you might not necessarily find in your final exam guys and the question we are going to solve today is does compound interest always bring more return on investment than simple interest when interest and initial value are constant guys so what it's basically saying is that if I had a hundred rand guys and I wanted to go invest my 100 Rand and the bank offered me either 10% simple interest or 10% compound interest. Which one would actually bring more return on investment? Which, uh, which one would I get more money back in return if I choose to invest with them, guys? And you guys will have probably realized like doing examples using simple and compound interest that like in... 99% of cases compound interest should be higher than simple interest but is it always the case that's what we're asking guys is it always does it always bring more return on investment guys and the simple answer to that is no guys it doesn't and I'm going to go into that and I'm going to use algebra to show you guys why it doesn't guys and how are we going to do this uh, it takes a little bit more of a complicated thought process guys so if this isn't making sense to you right now don't worry as i go through the video it's going to start making a lot more sense and at the end i'm going to show you how we could also have solved this numerically guys and when i go through that it's going to actually make the method i used here make a lot more sense guys okay and the way that we do this is that we first get our simple interest in our compound interest formula so simple interest is a or the final value is equal to p or initial value uh times one plus i your interest times n which is your time okay your compound interest is equal to a final value is equal to p initial value one plus i your interest all to the power of n so all to the power of time guys so right now looking at these equations guys we can't plot these on our standard cartesian axes guys because there's too many variables in play we have initial um, i mean we have our initial value we have our interest we have our time we have our final value uh, value guys there's too many variables in place guys so we have to try um change how these equations look to try make it in a way that we can actually plot these on axis and the way we do this is that we say a is set equal to y uh, so it's our dependent variable so we're just going to switch that a with a y so that we can plot it on our x y cartesian axis okay and it's the dependent variable we actually haven't changed anything about a we've just made that a is now going to use the symbol y p we're going to set equal to one so we're going to say that we're investing one rand uh, into the bank guys so it's not something very realistic but the reason we use it is so that we can make the equation as simple as possible and so that you can actually see the biggest difference on our graph later and i will set as 10 percent so 0.1 uh, because remember is that if it's in 10% we have to change it into decimal before we put it into our equation and then we will make n our random variable x guys so n so time guys is going to be our random variable so we're going to see that depending on the amount of time we're investing for which one is going to be more beneficial to us compound interest or simple interest okay and now uh, this is how we do it guys so here we set a is equal to y equals p we set as one one the one stays the same plus i is 0 0.1 we put 0 0.1 x so then you get your final equation for simple interest is y equals one plus 0 0.1 x for compound interest you do the same thing you set a is equal to y you say one uh, p is equal to one the one stays the same plus 0 0.1 because i is also still 10 percent with the compound interest and then you put the n you switch with x so now it's all to the power of x guys once again we haven't actually changed that what n is guys a n and x is still time guys it doesn't matter that we've changed the symbol it still represents time we i'm just putting it in this format here so that when i do it on our graphing calculator you know what the variables actually stand for guys so now i'm going to go look at the graphing calculator guys and 
what I like to use, guys, is I use Desmos.com, guys. I really recommend you guys use this as it really shows you uh, nicely uh, how the graphs are going to look out. Like, if you don't have time to draw a graph, you just go onto Desmos and they will plot the graph for you. All you have to do is write the equation up here. So that's what I've done here, guys. So you see the red line, the red one over here is 1 plus 0.1x. So that is our simple equation formula. So we see the red line. That is, sim I mean, simple interest, guys. Okay, then the blue line will be our compound interest. You see it's the 1.1x. It's the compound interest formula. And guys, looking at this, guys, it seems pretty obvious, hey, that compound interest is the better investment, guys, is that like we're looking over 100 years here, so it's a very long investment. But even from 20 to even 15 years on, five years on, guys, compound interest is doing way better than simple interest. But the question wasn't like most of the time, does compound interest do better than simple interest? It is, does it always do? Um, create more return on investment than simple interest, guys. And looking at this, you would probably want to say, yes, it does. But no, guys, it actually doesn't. Is that if we zoom in here, we zoom in down here. See, it looks like the lines are on top of each other here between one, uh, I mean, between zero and one here, guys. But if we carry on zooming in, look what we actually find, guys. So now we're between zero and one here. The red line is actually above the blue line, guys. So that means that simple interest for anything between zero and one, guys, is actually going to get you more return on investment than compound interest, guys. So you see, guys, you need to actually have a look at this very carefully, guys, is that you see the red line now above the blue line. And then when we look more the long term, the blue line becomes over the red line. And it's actually from the point zero to the point one that the simple interest out competes compound interest okay guys so i know that this might not make a lot of sense right now but i'm going to go show you now how we can present this graphically guys so what i've literally done here is that i've done used the exact same formula and i've showed you guys the values that you got that they're getting onto that graph so that you guys can actually see how simple interest actually does do better from zero to one guys and you see here is that when we have one over eight as our n or our x in that uh in that thing we have 1.0125 for compound interest we have 1.0119 so you can see it's a bit lower there here we have the same thing we have uh, when it's one over four we have 1.025 and compound is 1.024 so again considerably lower and then here at half it's again um simple interest is out competing it by uh 0 0.0202 sorry um, three over four, once again, it's just doing better, but you see it's getting a bit closer now, guys, is that now it's only 0 0.001 away from it. And then here, when it gets to one, it's the exact same, guys. We have 1.1, and then from that point on, your compound interest starts um, out competing simple interest quite considerably. So the first year, I mean, after two years, it's only doing better by 0 0.1, but after um, three years, it's already being by 0 0.1. Uh, 0.031 then uh, what's called after five years it's already beating it by 0.11 and after 10 years guys it's almost beating it by 0.6 guys so you can see there is that over long periods guys compound interest is definitely gives you more return on investment than simple interest but over short periods between zero to one okay um, it actually does give us um, it's actually more beneficial to use simple interest rather than compound interest, guys. So the reason why I say the short answer is no is that although we have solved this using um, algebra, we have solved that from zero to one, simple interest outcompetes compound interest. This actually doesn't apply to real life because um, most interests are calculated annually, guys. So they only give you the interest once a year. So once you have completed the, you have invested that money for a whole year, that's only when they'll add the return on investment, guys. So it doesn't actually apply to us in the long run, but it was actually, it's pretty cool to solve that it actually doesn't always uh, suit us to go compound interest. That sometimes, that especially when we're looking at very short-term investments, simple interest might actually be the way to go. Okay, guys, thanks for listening to another learning support video. I will see you guys.